Welcome to Canon Conversation. Finished that other book, so I'm picking a question from the internet. Didn't evolution put God out of a job? Why rely on religion in an age of science and knowledge? That question shows the fault. The fault it shows man's negative thinking where man is negative toward God and positive toward man it implies that God is not real that it is a concept that man made up what it's implying is that way back when no one knew how the world was made and so man because he was stupid the best thing he could come up with was there was a God who created man but now we've gotten super smart and so now we know that there is no God and instead of relying upon some made-up concept we're gonna rely upon fact and the fact that has been observed is that there is no God and that it all, everything came about through a big bang. And so evolution is here, and we know that to be true. And so then we can just get rid of this concept of God that was made up. That's pretty much, you can just tell by the wording of the question, that's pretty much what's being implied. Here's the answer. Remember, the question asked about why rely on religion in an age of science and knowledge? Age of science and knowledge. That sounds like new age. First Timothy 6.20 Paul tells Timothy about oppositions of science falsely so-called falsely so-called science means to know or knowledge but Paul says that science is falsely so-called it's not real what is real is God that question and what man has done is he has flip-flopped he's taken the truth of God and turned it into a lie Fundamentally, the issue is that man walks by sight and not by faith. Man is interested in the material world, following the material world. And anything that is not the material world is considered to be unreal. But God says it's actually just the opposite. In 2 Corinthians 4.18, he says that we are to look at the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are seen are temporal, meaning they are temporary. Basically, what is real is the spirit realm, and it will last forever. John 4.24 says God is a spirit. Titus 1.2 says God cannot lie. What God did when he... God is love. And his goal is to share his love for all eternity. But he can only do it through creatures that would have a free will choice. If God made robots, robots can do things, but there is no love exhibited in a robot. So God is concerned with the free will choice of man. And when man chooses to believe God, and since God is love, then God can exhibit his love through man. And what is real is the spirit realm. Because God, God is a spirit, and God has always existed. 
So in eternity past, before Genesis 1-1, before in the beginning, there is a spirit realm, realm with God in it. Then God, in wanting to exhibit his love, he made man with a free, he created a material world. And he made angels, he made cherubim, he made man, man dwelling on the earth right now. Man is made a material being because God says without faith it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11, 6. You need faith, meaning you have to believe. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence of things not seen. Remember 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says that the things that are not seen are eternal. That's a reference to the spirit realm. God wants to exhibit his love for all eternity through man. Man who has used his free will to believe God and his word. And the reason he's, why, why he uses man with the free will is because Man, God wants man to believe him and when man believes him then man accepts God's love God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us so when we believe God we accept God's love given to us it was commended to us and so now God's love can come through us. When we believe the gospel, we are given the faith of Christ. And remember Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when we believe the gospel, we receive God's love. And we also receive the faith of Christ given to us. And that faith is the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of the spirit realm. And so then, Ephesians 1.3 says we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Says we, I'm sorry, Hebrews 1.3 says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6 says we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. But notice it's spiritual blessings. We have the ability to share God's love in that spirit realm, and the spirit realm is what is real. Matthew 24 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Well, the reason heaven and earth pass away is because heaven and earth, as we know it today, uh, will cease to have its use once we get to the point where nobody else will be saved. When the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, the rapture takes place. When all Israel is saved, second coming, Jesus' second coming takes place. After the millennial kingdom, a dispensation of the fullness of times, Gentiles are saved, and the dispensation of the fullness of time takes place. Basically, this material realm, and see, this is the issue, is that when man, unbelieving man, looks at the world, they think that this is all that there is than all there ever will be. But all the material realm is just a type. In Colossians 2.16, when it says, Judge no man, let no man judge you therefore in respect of a holy day, a new moon, or Sabbaths, which were a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. God's goal when he created man was to create a vehicle through which he could share his love for all eternity in the spirit realm. And once no one else would be saved anymore, this heaven and earth passes away because there is no need for this. Now, you know, there is a new heaven and a new earth, Revelation 21 says, and that new heaven and new earth is without the tempter Satan 
and it's without the sin nature everybody by then has made their choice either to believe the gospel or not and then eternity begins and what is eternal is the spirit realm and when God made man our link to that spirit realm is all these intangible things see anything that you can put a price on such as this car traffic signs paint jobs houses uh, anything that you can put a price on belongs to this world anything you cannot put a price on is in the spirit realm God's love committed toward us you can't put a price on that the faith of Christ you cannot put a dollar value on the faith of Christ and sin now sin you don't want to have sin but you can't equate sin to a dollar value by having the sin nature and by sinning all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and having that sin nature that's a spirit that's something that operates in the spirit realm today secular humanism says well there is no such thing as sin well that's because they deny the spirit realm if you're an atheist and you say God doesn't exist it's not that you're relying upon science and knowledge and you've dismissed the concept of God what it means is you've dismissed the existence of a spirit realm and so then you dismiss the existence of things that are spiritual at least the things you don't like the reason we have a sin nature and that we sin is that is really our interaction with the spirit realm God in order for us to be saved we have to recognize that we have sinned and then we have to trust in Jesus death burial and resurrection as atonement for our sin so the sin is part of the spirit realm sin is overcome by the love of God through Jesus death burial and resurrection these are spiritual concepts God has given us the knowledge of those things through having a conscience through the invisible things of him are clearly seen by those that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that we were are without excuse that's Romans 1 verse 20 and 21 I believe it is tells you that God has given all of us the knowledge of God's eternal power and Godhead then Romans 1 32 says who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but take pleasure in them that do them so that verse tells us that we have the knowledge of sin so our spiritual knowledge is that there is a God now atheists will say there is no God but God's Word and God cannot lie God says that everybody knows of his eternal power and Godhead what that means is that in this even though we look at this material world and think these things are real what is really real are the things of God and we know even if you're an unbeliever according to Romans 1 you know that you have sinned you know there is a God you know he has eternal power and that you are worthy of death as a result of your sin Romans 1 tells you that every single person understands that but what man does is he does it says he does not like to retain God. Romans 1 says that man did not like to retain God in his knowledge because that makes man look bad and man in his pride refuses to believe the truth that he is a sinner that God has eternal power and that God can save him from his sin man refuses to believe that because of man's pride and so then man makes up a religion in this case called evolution to explain away God to say he's not real and thereby he explains away sin and his guilt before God so when the question asks didn't evolution put God out of a job 
what it what really and when it says why rely on religion in the age of science and knowledge everything is flip-flopped this is a perspective of a man who thinks that the material world is all that exists so in the material world there is no God because God is a spirit in the material world evolution is an explanation if your basis is this material world is what exists what is real then you're going to use a material explanation to come up with it that's why evolution because evolution uses material it says the God God in evolution the evolution says there is no God that's what they say with their mouth but really God is whatever or whoever depending on what your definition the God what's a God to you is whatever existed before you what created you and what will destroy you basically or give you life either way that's God because a God is someone who is over you has power over you so evolution comes along and says that we were created with a big bang so there there were all these materials these molecules uh, that were just came together somehow came together and then poof this world existed and then evolution also believes that the time will come when either the Sun will burn out or will something somehow we will be destroyed whether it's through an ice age that kills us because of the Sun whether it's um, you know an, a, um, a meteor that crashes in and destroys this earth or uh, a nuclear war every explanation see what evolution does is, is it says material created us pa particles molecules not a person but material came together and created us and material nuclear bomb sun burning out ice age whatever um, material is going to destroy us and so evolution they say well this is science but God says in 1st Timothy 6 20 that this is oppositions of science falsely so called because the true knowledge isn't what is in this world because it is temporal or temporary it will pass away I went to college and learned to be an accountant I spent years studying what I studied and got a degree that's knowledge but it's not eternal knowledge I know how to be an accountant I understand the rules of my job and all of you that have a job you know the rules whatever job it is you've got rules that you've learned you've got knowledge that enables you to do that job but a million years from now that knowledge won't do any good it won't exist anymore debits and credits for an accountant income statement balance sheet those are concepts and knowledge that pertains only to this world in the spirit realm that system doesn't exist there's some accounting I mean there's order in the spirit realm but it operates by different rules Romans 8 2 says that we operate in this material realm by the law of sin and death but we operate in the spirit realm if we're saved by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus so yes I've got knowledge of being an accountant but that's not true real knowledge because it is temporal it's temporary it will pass away I mean that knowledge may do me good for the rest of my life and I may use that the rest of my life but once I die I enter the real world I enter eternity and knowing debits and credits isn't going to help me a bit if I'm in hell or if I'm in heaven it doesn't matter so that's not real science or real knowledge because it doesn't last forever which is why 1 Timothy 6 20 says oppositions of science falsely so-called real science or real knowledge 
is knowing the things of God and His Word. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What is real is God, His Word. What is real science and knowledge is God and His Word. So, when you ask the question, didn't evolution put God out of a job? What is, what really the answer to that is, there is no material God that man created to explain the material world. Evolution is material created by man to explain the world, material world. God is a spirit. He is eternal. He has no beginning, has no end. He always exists. And so you can't he is of a higher order, that spirit order, than man of the material order. Therefore, you cannot put God to death with evolution. That's like saying, well, didn't the three-year-old kid put to death the concept of work by playing all day? No, the work is a higher order that the child will learn when, as he gets older. Playing is just something that is mocking work, really. It's not real work. It's just fulfilling the lust of the flesh and not accomplishing anything. And so it's the same thing when it comes to evolution versus God. And then you ask the question, why rely on religion in the age of science and knowledge? Well, the true religion is atheism. If you're a Bible believer, you're not relying on religion. But, you know, they got the wrong definition of religion. You could say, why rely on the Bible in an age of science and knowledge? Well, the Bible is science and knowledge in the spirit realm that lasts for eternity. Whereas the science and knowledge of evolution and secular humanism is a man-made knowledge that only applies to this material world. And it will pass away. So didn't evolution put God out of a job? No. God is spiritual. He will always exist. Evolution is material. It will pass away. Why rely on the Bible in an age of science and knowledge? Because the Bible is true science and knowledge in the spirit realm that will last forever. The science and knowledge of atheism and secular humanism is material and it will pass away. Um, so, so basically, it's, it's got everything flip-flopped. Man has, because he doesn't like to retain God in his knowledge, because in the spirit realm, God is king. God is holy. He has never sinned. Everything he does is right. In the material realm, man is king. Everything man does is right. Man builds the, the better gun, the better computer the better machine, the better house. All this prog so-called progress that man has, it's in the material realm. Man is God in the material realm. God is God in the spirit realm. And so this question, when people rely upon evolution and believe there is no God and rely upon secular humanism, what they're really doing is they are completely rejecting what is real and eternal, the spirit realm, for something that is temporary, the material realm. So it is actually, what is true is actually the opposite of what this question implies. Thanks for watching.